Hi, this is Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and this video is intended to answer the most common question we get on our breadboard tutorial video. If you have a circuit with a battery, a resistor, and an LED, does the resistor need to come before the LED in order to drop the voltage or resist the current, or can you also put the resistor after the LED? It turns out that it works both ways, and this video will explain why. We can prove this pretty quickly just by demonstrating it on breadboard. So here I have a 2xAA battery pack providing about 3 volts wired to a breadboard on the positive side and the negative side, and I have three circuits set up, but none of these circuits are closed yet because I haven't put an LED in the middle. Now, you'll see that if I connect an LED just directly between the positive side and the negative side with no current limiting resistor, then too much current flows through the LED and the LED will burn out. So if I connect one here, it might light up really brightly, briefly for a second or flicker for a bit, but that's going to be too much current and it's going to kill the LED. So now if I take that LED out and put it in one of the other spots with a current limiting resistor, it's not going to light up because this LED is dead and it's actually a little hot to the touch now because we burned it out. If we take a new LED and put it in this first circuit that has the current limiting resistor on the positive side, you will see that the LED will light up and stay lit. It's not burning out because this resistor is helping to limit the current flowing through the LED. What confuses a lot of people is that you can also have this current limiting resistor on the negative side. I can put the LED in here, but do remember that LEDs are polar, so if you get the LED backwards, it's not going to light up at all. You have to have the long leg of the LED on the positive side. That LED still lights up, and it doesn't burn out, again because this resistor is limiting the current flowing through the LED. And this confuses a lot of people because you think that this resistor has to be first, so it drops the voltage or decreases the current before the current hits the LED. And it turns out that that's not actually true. So next we're going to talk about why. Now that we've seen a demonstration, let's look at some of the math behind this and write down everything we know about our circuit. First, we know that voltages add in series. More formally, this comes from something called Kirchhoff's voltage law. In this case, it tells us that the voltage across the battery is equal to the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage drop across the LED. We also know that currents are the same in series. In this case, since all three parts are in series, that tells us the current through the battery must equal the current through the resistor, which must equal the current through the LED. We also know something about each of the individual parts in the circuit. We know that an LED has something called a forward voltage drop. If you go to an LED's data sheet and look up the graph of current versus voltage, it will look something like this. It starts off very flat and then skyrockets around a certain threshold. It's not a perfectly straight line, but we usually treat it like a constant value, called the LED's forward voltage drop. We know that for a resistor, Ohm's law applies, which states that V equals IR, or voltage equals current times resistance. Given all this information, now let's analyze the circuit. First, let's define a ground or reference node. Even though there's physically no external ground in this circuit, in a battery-powered circuit, we usually define the negative terminal of the battery as ground, or zero volts. It's important to remember that voltage is always a potential difference between two points. Using that information, now that we've defined zero, we can define voltages at the other points in the circuit. I'm using two AA batteries, which provide about three volts. And that gives us a voltage of three volts here, because zero plus three is three. We know that the forward voltage drop across the LED is about 2 volts, which is going to give us 2 volts there. Again, it's important to remember that these voltages are relative to ground, so I get this number from 0 plus 2. Now that we have all this information, we can calculate the voltage drop across the resistor, again remembering that voltage is a difference between two points. So the voltage across the resistor is not 3 volts, it's 1 volt, because I have 3 volts on this end of the resistor, and 2 volts on this end of the resistor, so the voltage drop across the resistor is 3 volts minus 2 volts, or 1 volt. I can now use Ohm's law to calculate the current through the resistor. The current through the resistor is equal to the voltage drop across the resistor divided by the resistance. That's 1 volt, and in this case I used a 47 ohm resistor, so if we divide those numbers we get about 21 milliamps. Remember that the resistor and the LED are in series, so the current through the resistor also has to equal the current through the LED. It turns out that none of this math changes if we swap the LED and the resistor. So what happens if we put the LED first? 
we still have our ground point over here at zero volts, and we still have three volts on the other side of the battery. We know we have a two volt drop across the LED, so in this case, we're going to do three volts minus two volts gives us one volt at this point. Now we can do the same thing we did last time and calculate the current through the resistor after calculating the voltage drop across the resistor. In this case, the voltage drop across the resistor is one volt minus zero volts, which again is one volt. So now when we use Ohm's law to calculate the current, we get the same answer. One volt divided by 47 ohms is equal to 21 milliamps. And since the resistor and the LED are still in series, that is still equal to the current through the LED. So it turns out that it didn't matter that we swapped the order of the resistor and the LED, the current through the LED remains the same in both cases. That's why it doesn't matter if you put the resistor first or second.